presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Andy in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, Andy, what's going on, brother? How much, Tom? How you doing? I'm great, man. Yourself? Pretty good. Hey, congratulations on the grandbaby. Yes, thank you. I know. <laughs> you just said, Tommy just sent me a picture. I mean, it's gorgeous out right now. He just was taking him out for his first walk this morning. All right. He's prowling and prowling already. Yeah, I bet. Now, Tom O'Brien. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien, and we're looking at on this uh, Wednesday, the 16th of March, where the Fed has already had the Fed speak. There are a whole bunch of things that we're going to look at. I'm going to start off right now, just going straight to the TLT, which is the bonds. The bonds slumped to 130.32 today. It was at 155.12 in December. This is this looks like a stock. In fact, if you look at this chart right here, there are so many stocks that look with this double top and then a failure, and then the cup formation gives a one to one to the downside. There are just so many stocks that have done that. Um, this looks like a stock, but it's not. It's bonds, the safety of bonds. Remember, well, 155 down to 130. You're talking about 25 points. I would say that that's quite a, quite a dip. At this particular point, let's go through this one one step at a time. And from one of the reasons for my subscribers to my opening call yesterday morning, early when I sent out my newsletter at about 8:10, I said uh, we want to go long the Dow Diamonds. We want to start at least a small position. We want to get in. It's the only new position we've got for the day. That's what we want because there's a really good chance based on the fact that the um, that the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, crossed positive. Usually after that happens, especially in the daily chart, you get at least further upside activity. Well, that was yesterday. And you can see right here, yes, this is the daily chart on the left. You can see the Dow did cross positive. So just for the moment, we'll step aside. We won't talk about the bonds. We'll talk about just each index. And I'll tell you what's really important at this particular time based on my methodology. This cluster formation that we're seeing right here, very often in the Chapman Way methodology, you get what's called a, a, it, it's a buy signal that doesn't get to a buy mode. The buy mode would imply there should be at least four higher peaks. But all it does is it goes to like peak A, just one peak up, and then it fails, or it goes to A, and then B, and then fails. But it does not take out that initial low. I just do this to show you, for those of you new to my work, the Chapman Wave notation, price comes down, then you try to identify the lowest low bar, and then each, like a sawtooth wave to the upside, you count each successively, you're basically grading alphabetically in sequence each higher peak, and the idea is to get to usually to a peak A and then a B, and at that point, there's a chance that you can go to a buy mode, which implies there should be at least four higher peaks. That's your obligation in this particular pattern, to go from a buy signal to a buy mode. Now, sometimes this starts off and then it fails and it tries again, but it doesn't take it out that initial low. If it takes time and moves sideways, at some point, when everything kicks in, not only does it go to a buy mode, it actually put, could recycle and go peak A, B, C, D, E, F, and even G, or the D recycles, but it's a very powerful move. We haven't got to that stage just yet, but I want to just explain the pattern that we're looking at. So that's number one. That's the first pattern. The second pattern is, within this context, I do not like to see a very quick peak A, a bar rest, a peak B, a bar rest, and not very high, and then a leg C. And look, today there was this big move up to the to the upside. And the pattern that I'm, I'm, I show right here from the high that was made at 36,952.65 on the 5th of January, look at the lower lows, sorry, look at the lower highs and much lower lows. That's a pattern that I call the falling axe. Let me just see if I can draw, uh, draw that in. Yep, there it is. So that's a pattern where price goes higher, then it starts to come down, starts to make these lower highs, much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, it finds a base and it tries to break out of that uptrend line, which is actually the down, the upper downtrend line. And then it can go one to one to the upside if it succeeds in breaking that and turning that line into support. Whoops, wait a minute. It tried to break out 
uh, to the 35,824 level around about February the 7th, 8th, and it failed. And that inside track repellent zone has produced a, a reversal every single time. What a nice little technique. Instead of one line, trend line, it's easy for all of you to do. You just grab another line, make a parallel line, and within about a sixteenth inch of an inch or so, you, you have this inside track, either a propellant zone on the downside. We'll look at the ES in a moment, and I'll show you that, or uh, a cell zone right here. So this cell zone says it's already in leg C, that's already using up a little bit too much, usurp too much energy without really going anywhere on a closing basis. If it was up at the 33,950 level instead of 33,702, the day is young. Anything can happen. But so far, it's just a long legged doji type candle. There's a lot more that has, has to happen. I would say by Friday afternoon, the Dow has to at least test this 200 period exponential moving average of 34,363. And by Monday or Tuesday of next week, has to be holding the 34,000 level as support. If this is going to be a, a signal that says we should go into next week with higher highs. Okay. But at the same time, as I said, for subscribers, we went long early yesterday morning. Um, we, we got the, just a little above the price that I initially I, I th thought was the preferred price, but we did get in. And I did not, I only raised the stop to a gain so that there was a, a bit of a profit. Why? Because even if we pull back on Fed speak today, my, my gut feeling was that this histogram, this is the 0% line in the MACD, was starting to turn positive, And that at least gives you a cushion to the downside. You remember the, the restart of the buy signal? We can get a whole bunch of those as long as we don't take out 32,272. I'm spending time on the Dow because this is the one that I'm looking at very closely. Closely. It, in many ways, it's holding a lot better than the others. Monthly, the weekly chart is in a sell mode. The monthly chart hasn't given a sell signal yet, still in the buy mode. Let's go to the S&P. I'll try to finish these off quickly because there is a lot to discuss and there are a lot of questions. Um, so S&P, so this is very important. You see this trend line? You remember the inside track repellent zone? Well, look at this. Going all the way back to last year in... August of 2021, this is the daily chart, I drew in this pattern, I made it very light, now I've made it a deeper color to show the support level. So the 41, 14.65 low of the 24th of February, you see all these restarts here, but in the H pattern, we're not breaking, and we're not doing a dreaded H pattern. We haven't taken out 41, 14.65. This is with the war going on. This is with appeals for all sorts of things. This is, this is with Wheat going to uh, highs, crude oil going to major highs. This is with uh, all the VIX index holding. Even now, the VIX is at 27, 26, still pretty high. And yet it's held this Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. So far, the action is not good, but it's holding. There's a lot to talk about. As soon as I return, Basil Chapman, Tiger Tick, oops. I do the Tiger Technicians at 10 o'clock every day. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. I am fortunate to be the guest host today. There's a lot to discuss. I also want to show you the E-minis, how there was a Chapman Wave squash pattern and that we broke out to the peak C and now we're in, we went to peak D. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. 
The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500 plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. We're back sitting here for Tom O'Brien. I do the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time every market day. And the opening call is my daily newsletter. So um, look, look, this is a technique. We're, I, I've always felt from, what, 20 years ago when I joined TFNN and spoke to Tom O'Brien before and before he asked me to join TFN, I said, as long as it is educational, um, that's absolutely fantastic with me because all the work that I do is based on certain methodologies that I've developed over the years. So here's one that I call, the reason why I put the MAGD above the stochastic in all my charts is that there's a particular pattern that I discovered years ago, and that is when there's a sharp move up and the MAGD expands at nine period differential, goes way above the 14 period moving, uh, sorry, above the 38 period, uh, 26 period moving average, um, and the stochastic has gone from under 20%, preferably under 10%, single digits, to 20 and then 22%, all within a really quick move. Now, uh, I, I saw just even yesterday, someone said, no, no, moving averages are lagging indicators. You tell me, is this a lagging indicator? Let me just draw this line right here. Um, I'm going to move this line up. I had, I had it for another reason. I'm just going to move this vertical line. You see the stochastic? The stochastic turned up, the, the on-balance volume turned up one bar before the low. Um, the, this is the one-minute chart of, the, of this is the uh, March E-mini. Yeah, the, the prices are changed, but the, the pattern is exactly the same for the June. But look, the, the stochastic turned around two bars before the actual low, and then the MACD was just three bars after the low. So yeah, there are lagging indicators, but believe me, if you use them together with other things, they can give you fabulous turns. And then the squash is where the stochastic runs sharply over 80%. The MACD is expanding, and you're either still only in leg A, or maybe you've gone to B. And that says there should be a really quick move. This was, this was a, a very nice trade because it gave you all these different signals. And that was at 42, around about 42, I think it was uh, 68 and um, it turned green, meaning the nine went over the 14 period moving average. And the rule of thumb in my work is that when you get the Chapman wave squash between the stochastic and the MACD, it goes really quickly to peak A, peak B, and then a C. And then the torque, the initial, initial takeoff, low gears of the move to the upside, hands it over to the momentum of the MACD, and finally you get 
peak C takes a breather, and then the MACD takes over for your D, and there is your D. And if you look at the pattern, the reason why I had this one over here is that I chose that for my left side, right side price time match. It wasn't exactly with the plumb line in the middle. That would have been the plumb line there, but I identified through a particular candle. If it doesn't look like it's going to work in like a lopsided cup or a gravy cup, then and you aren't going to get that exact semicircle at the bottom. I have to use other techniques. So I drew this in earlier on, and it went, look, it was one bar early getting to that exact high of the left side at one at just at 2 o'clock before the Fed speak at 43.18.25. We went to 40, 43.17.50. Fifty, so it missed it by about uh, less than a dollar, and double topped and pulled back. And now, what have we got? A brand new A B C, and this is a new leg D. The futures, the E mini futures, are up sixty-eight points, sixty-eight points after plunging earlier on, going down to the forty-two forty level. Oh my goodness, forty-two forty. We're almost, oh, we're ninety points higher. That's the speed of this mark. And then in the ten minute charge, you got your peak F top. At about 10 o'clock, that big spike, and then I kept pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. Goes down to that low of 42.46, right there. And now we're in still a leg A in the 120-minute chart. Now I can go back to what I was discussing before. One of the reasons why I said to subscribe is we want to go long. And why today we didn't do anything about the stop other than to make it a profitable trade from the entry point. Uh, and that, basically, this is the diamonds. If I can just get there, give me one second. Yeah, so that was, um, I'm not clicking the right buttons. There you are, click. So we're, we're looking at uh, an entry at uh, started along at 330.75. Now we've got a 332.25 stop. And and I didn't want to raise the stop and, or even say take off some money because the point was that after Fed speak, if we got this sudden sharp move to the downside and by the close, and that was really important. That's why I was saying that this last hour is so important. If we can come back, we don't have to go back to where we were, but we're actually almost there. We're up 340 points in the Dow. We're up 68 points in the, uh, in the S&P. There's a chance that all that downside momentum has formed at least a base of support. That's what you want to see in this extended rectangle formation in the H pattern that doesn't take out the left side low, but in fact has really bad news, but just doesn't want to break down, especially in today like this. Can you imagine shorts right now? People have said, oh, this is it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, the Fed. We're down. We we're down 170. We were up 500 or 400 points, and now, oh, oh. And all of a sudden, look what's happened. So that says to me, it doesn't tell you how high you can go, but it does say finally we've got a cushion of support, at least for the coming three, maybe five days. That's really important. Now let's see where we can go on the upside. Look, the S&P, the histogram finally crossed positive. Days young, we've got 25 minutes to go. Anything can happen. But what's really important is you've got your V-shaped recovery in the on-balance volume, the blue line. The stochastic was giving you a really positive divergence by holding one at 36%. That's lousy action, but at least it's holding. It says there's just a chance that this Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone is working its magic and that at least the 4386 level of the 200 period moving average can become a target. Ah, oh, but wait a minute, we've got more. We've got to look at what? The Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Now I call them Chapman Wave because it's under the umbrella of all my different techniques. And that's just to identify it um, you know, from other techniques. Everybody has different techniques. And that says, Together with the four, the uh, 200 period, the orange line, the 200 period. Oh, I meant to show you. Talk about orange line. Look at this. Look at the uh, daily. This is the one minute chart. Look how important that orange line. You see this orange line right here. Even when we make your member peak D is the objective. 
even when it went above from this level at 11.40, whatever moment that was, that was on the 60s, that was uh, this morning, 11.40, rallying up from the 200 period moving average, it comes down, tests it, breaks it, and then, oh, that becomes resistance. It's resistance. You don't even have to know about the 200 period moving average when you're down here at 110 this afternoon because you were down at the 42 or 4300 level. And then all of a sudden it goes peak A, B, C, D, E. It has a retest with a, with a cup formation where just about on the 200 period moving average and then cup plop, it gets reversed, it gets repelled all the way down. And where did it go back to? The 200 period moving average. It spent a good 20 minutes testing it and all of a sudden it's broken out. Now it's in a new leg E at 43.32. What was the high of the day? 43.49.50. Oh, what a market. Uh, intraday, I, I'm sure there are people that I must have traded intraday like it was a one year's worth because of so many different up and down moves. I'll be back. Basil Jackson, sitting one and only Tom O'Brien. I believe we'll be back tomorrow. I think so. Um, that was at 353. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, Tom is out, and I'm, I'm the guest host. And I, I have the privilege of being the guest host. Let's go to Sharky and uh, Natick Mass, I believe it is. Hi, Sharky. How are you? Hi, Basil. How are you? Uh, I'm so well. looking at uh, PTRA, um, Pro, and then Pro looking Terra at uh, the NQs, the NQs too. It, look, it looks like, you know, you had mentioned about a 13714 close. It looks like we're at 13834 or whatever on the, the NQ, the futures. And uh, 
PTRA, going back to January 28th, the 652 low, and then March 14th, we had 662 low. So I'm wondering if this thing's coming off the bottom here. Um, so, and we looks so, like on, on balance volume is kind of improving. So I'll, I'll let you go. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you for calling, Sharky. I'll just run around and you can see all the, all the chart patterns in the den. Yep. Uh, folks, there's a pattern that I talk about. You come down sharply and then you make a roll over a red. Uh, this is red because it's called the H pattern. I call it the dreaded H in red because if it takes out the left side low, that can be very serious. We've seen that many, many times. There's also a pattern that looks very much like this here, where it goes straight up and straight down. Here you can see it's like the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down to the peak D. And that was back in about the 10th of January. And it plunges from just about 11 to the 650 level. And then it rallies where? It starts a buy signal that goes to a buy mode. This is PTRA. Let me just move this away. PTRA is Proterra Inc. Common Stock. Um, it, 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 this is it does um, electric vehicle solutions for commercial applications like buses, etc. So um, I looking out, I like this, but on a very short term basis, I love this move up to eight eight and a half percent today at seven point forty nine. But there's a big problem. This H pattern suggests that because it did hold the left side low of six dollars and. Uh, 52 cents on the 28th of January, you've got to see it continue rallying. Now, I, I was going to ask you, I, I don't think you're there, right? Because you were going to listen um, listen to me. Uh, if you're there, just say hi. I think you've gone. So uh, it has to follow through because for this H a, a pattern to at least become a lowercase h to a lowercase m, meaning a second arch is going to unfold. Even if I sit here, I don't, don't know if you're in it, but if you're in it, let's just say you're not in it. Would I buy, would I sell? I'd say risk reward based on the fact that it's an EV solution to a, a problem when we're having gas screaming to the upside. I'm not yet sure I even hear talk about the electric vehicles uh, to the extent that I would have expected um, hopefully battery and all that, everything's going on in the battery so that we can get greater accommodation from batteries, longer lasting and um, quicker charging because that's what you're going to need if you need an infrastructure. I don't want to get into this now other than years and years and years ago I said when people said to me, oh, the Prius is going to tell us that we electric vehicles, there'll be no more gas engines. I said it takes 50 years no matter what you do to get from the idea to where you can just turn the key and everything works. It takes 50 years to get to the point where electric vehicles will be as common and the whole idea of gassing up or whatever it is at that particular point, switching batteries, I don't know what it'll be, or just charging because it only takes as much as the time as, as gas. It'll take a long time. We've been there 20 years, got another maybe 20 years to go. So I love this idea, but it's only an idea. I don't see anything in the chart pattern that says it can do anything more than bounce. At 750, if you want to nibble, just start a little position here. Tomorrow cannot be a break under 729, a close. And to me, that would be just negative action. It has to be a move into the 770 or higher area. If that works, I think there could be a decent bounce to rule of thumb if it doesn't take out the left side low in the dreaded H pattern and become successful. You can go to the next moving average resistance or gap or, or um, doji candle. In this case, the gap high, gap high was the 2nd of February, no, 2nd of March at 8.09. So that would be the, the big resistance on the upside if it's able to take that out and fill the gap and then start trading above the gap that is really positive. So 20, maybe 30 cents stop if you were to get in right here, but it's got to work tomorrow and the next day. And looking on the weekly chart, there is a lot of work to be done. I'm not sure this is ready for the big time, but maybe as a trade, yes. Next question I had was, let me just run through here in the Tiger, uh, Tiger TV. Uh, let's see. Able to make a peak C. What is not able to make a peak C? Yes. So the S&P, let's just do that again. We're looking, uh, did I do all the different indexes? I don't know, maybe I'll do it now. So gold uh, gold pulled back to the 19, sorry, 1895 area. It's actually much better now. It's down only six, but make sure that the 18, I really think of 1880, 1890 to 1880 is absolutely critical to hold. If it's able to have a bounce after this oversold condition, a bounce is not good enough. It has to get to the 
19, it has to be 50 points higher, 1973 area, and it has to do that by Friday afternoon or Monday to say, hey, that was just a momentary glitch on my part. I'm coming right back. As a fear factor, it's in play. Gold, remember to me, uh, gold is the icon of fear, geopolitical fear. Money flows into gold, and that is still uh, extant at this point, but it is a peak E in the Chapman wave at 2078.80 on the 8th of March. Pull back really sharply, just a percentage-wise, uh, down to 1895. Good grief, that, that is a big move. On the upside, peak E with a, a, the weekly chart, but the week is young, so that if it doesn't grow above 2078.80, if that is still the high, because that gets smoothed out. This is the continuous contract, 2078.5. Uh, if it doesn't go above that, this is going to be a peak E, and the monthly charts making a potential double top with that high that was made back in May. Well, I should have put the date. Um, August, August of 2020 at... Uh, this is a continuous contract, so my price is 2113.4. So just filling, filling in this big arch formation, trying to build up some support. That's what we're looking at. Silver, SI, silver is trading. Oh, questions came in about gold. I'll do that, about the GLD, about the GDX, sorry. Uh, the, uh, silver is coming back from today's low. It's still down 0 0.06 at 2509. Made a peak E in the daily. It's only a peak C in the weekly, but the chart in the weekly is, is improving in the cup formation. It's got quite a way to go. I could draw in the left side, right side price time match, and that says there's a chance going from this side right through that. Yeah. Oh, it'll have to be. Oh, this is a little bit too sharp. So we've missed that opportunity. I have to now look at this one here, and that says, nah, nothing here is giving me clues. All I can say is that above 27.50 in the next, I'm giving it all the way to next Wednesday, will be absolutely incredible action for silver. But a close below uh, 24.19 says that 24.14, 200 period moving average, that's going to be a common target. High grade copper, high grade copper is actually doing quite nice. What did I hit? Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, okay, good. There we go. High grade copper at, this is a continuous contract. There it is. High grade, nice action today. Up 12 cents at 4.63, but it did make a peak at the, I forgot to type that in, at 5.0395 in the continuous contract on the 7th. And then it plunged below 450, and now it's at 463. So copper is in play. It's holding very well, but it hasn't really broken out yet. So let's just look at uh, SCCO. This is a, a great copper company. This is Southern Copper. Yep, that made that peak D. You're always looking for peak Ds, and there it is, right there. D and it's pulled back sharply, uh, pull back, and the weekly is a peak D. So it's holding okay, but it's it's way off the high. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Dow's at 304. We'll be right back for the time. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm O'Brien. Hi folks, Basil Chapman City from Tom O'Brien. And just to be sure, I had a couple of questions if I could quickly follow up on the one minute chart. Remember, this is the March contract. I have no need to change. I'll probably switch over tomorrow to the June. So there's this peak E that we were talking about in the at 350 at 327. That's uh, uh, 27 minutes past three Eastern time. And then it pulls back. Now it's trying to make the cup formation to retest the high. But the technicals are starting to weaken. So I always say, remember, you're always fighting two patterns. One's bullish, one's bearish. And this particular instance, you've got the cup formation. If it takes too much time, be careful because that dreaded H pattern says, be careful. If it takes out the left side low in the next 10 minutes, below 40, 321, 50, there's a chance that we start to close with with a weaker close today after such a big move to the upside, downside, and back on the upside. Watch this closely. But in the meantime, it's the green line says it's walking the nine period moving average. It's really good. And here on the two minute chart, it's got a peak D. That was a peak E. This is a peak D. And it starts to struggle a little bit as the technicals weaken, but that nine is still way above the 14. Just thought I'd do some of the technical stuff here because we always get questions about it. So the question, not a question, but a statement came in saying so for 60 days, what, what did uh, Jim Lai say? Uh, not being able to make a peak C in the SPY in the past 60 days. So the S&P, look at this, correct. As someone who studied the Chapman Way methodology in great detail, um, yes, I agree. Look at this. Since the peak F top at 4818.62 on the 4th of, of January, we made the dreaded H failure pattern at a peak A minus. We ran all the way to a B, became a B minus at 4595 after that 4222 low that was made around right about the 24th of January. Then it ran up again, peak A, peak B to 4416.78 from the 4114.65 low of the 24th of February. And here it is again with a peak B. It's called a gray peak B because it's underneath the previous high and all the technical is not in place for a buy mode. I, I got a blue, but it should be gray. And we've got the dreaded age so far successful. I'm looking at this and saying, are we just trapped in a rectangle formation? And that instead of using price, we're going to use time to try to get maybe a little bit above the the 200 period moving average? Or is this going to be a nice surprise breakout? This is one of those times where because the, the sell mode in the daily chart is so strong, to get a buy signal to a buy mode is going to take a tremendous of price movement, not time, but price, meaning 44.15, 44.22 would say, ah, now we're starting to rally. And the weekly chart is in a sell mode. And yet with all this stuff going on, record uh, oil, record wheat, record corn, record, uh, just name it, the DBA, our DBA, um, this is the DB agricultural futures. Uh, this is the, the, we've had the DBA for ages. This is this is the, the grains. This really tells you a big story, an overall story. Only now it's starting to show some weakness after hitting uh, 22.64. And this is a negative. And this is just saying to me, you know what? There's a chance 
that these commodities and oil, etc., actually pull back here from a news-related spiral to the upside, and now they're going to have a normalization at a higher price, but way off the highs. And that's going to give the market some breathing room to at least move high. And that's the reason why I didn't want to get out of any position of, of we have long positions, we've raised stops for certain, but in the Dow Diamonds, uh, basically buying before the open yesterday, um, I don't really want to mess around with that. I think that that has a chance to at least move higher. We'll see. So let's just go, go on to, I did that, I did that. Yeah, I do want to spend some time on the TBT, which is the, the inverse of the, the TLT, Lehman 20-year Treasury Bond Fund. And this is called the Ultra Short Lehman 20-year T-Bond ETF. It's run up today to 2120. It's pulled back to 2062. Long-legged doji when it hasn't closed, but it looks a little bit like a doji candle. And as I'm looking at it right now, regard, hasn't this done all the work for the Fed? Look at this. I, I, I mean, really. The high that was made back in March, the week of the 19th of 2021, at 22.60, plummets down to under 16, and then it rallies up peak A, peak B, real leg C. There's the Chapman Wave inside track target repellent line. And that's just saying, okay, you've got to break above that, but you can keep using that as a magnet point, and it says buy the... 22nd of April, there's a chance that yields will be testing. This is the yield. TBT is the yield, basically. Um, at 22.60, we'll, we'll test that. By then, and we're at 22.62. That's two points. It could take a little longer. But that's really what we're looking at. If we're looking at, oh, I do have to show this chart. Let me just do this because some of you asked if I could show it again. Uh, let me just do this right here. Um, there it is. So this is the 30-year bond. T bond yield, the 10-year T note yield, and the 5-year T note yield. Uh, white is for the 30-year, brown is for the 10-year, and 5 is the cyan uh, yield. And what we're we looking at, look at this, how close they are together. Look at that. You've got 21.88 um, for the 5-year, and the 4-year, it's actually overlapping. The 4-year, I'm oh, sorry, the 10-year, if I can tap on it. The 10-year is, uh-oh, something stuck. Hello, anybody home? We don't need that. Oh, there are, okay, good. So here we are. The 10-year is at 21.88, and the 5-year is at, oh, I can't believe this, 21.96, 2.196 and 2.88. Flattening of, oh, we're looking at something that is so unusual, and we've got the leg C, which is a legitimate leg C at this point at 24.15, 2.415 for today's high. Is it today's high? Yeah, 2.246. 2 so this is amazing. We're, we're almost at the, no, it can't be, it must be 24. 24.26 is the high. And what we're looking at is, 25.05 was so you're almost like a double top potential here. This is really important. This has done the work for the Fed, so they have to officialize it now by by raising rates. But this is the real reality: is that you've already got this huge move up, and look what happened when we went to the high back in March or so of 2021. Um, March of 2021. The general market was holding pretty nicely. Even when they were having the pullbacks, you were only having small percentage uh, pullbacks. So this is really important. Most, most, uh, most intriguing about this is that within the context of um, the different sectors, the RTX, which is the RTX, which is the um, Raytheon, Raytheon is now finally pulling back. LMT, which is Lockheed Martin, finally pulling back. So this match, doesn't this match very much we, we saw in wheat and in, in the corn and in, in crude oil and gold even. So I, I think there's a chance right here that there's a little bit of quietness in the market. And that's the reason why I said let's try to keep this diamond position as long as we can. And we'll try to add it. Now, uh, one of the things that we did today, I'd be... Uh, that's the break coming up. All right, we've got one more segment to go, and I've got a bunch of questions I wanted to get to. Go to the short. 
Dumpling, dump, dump, dump. Yeah, there are a couple of questions. I'll try to deal with them quickly as we come back for the final segment. Dow's up 412. S&P's up 81. Thank you. We needed that. We just needed that, especially after the Fed talk. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, the top of mind. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. Final segment. And a couple of things I'm going to cover. I had a question about the S&P. Will it make a new high this year? My belief is there's a really good chance that it, 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 it should. But there's a, there are a bunch of things that we have no idea what's going to happen. What, a nuclear war? Who knows? But, but talking about reality, we're talking about what, what, what we're looking at. I'll talk about it tomorrow on my show, the Target Technicians Hour at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And call in, if, call in if you have any questions. But my, yesterday was not a good day in the brokerage area and that to me was a big disappointment but I needed to see what happened today. Well, the IAI, the iShares Broker Dealer and Security, and just for clarification, we've been long since 45 back in uh, 24th of March 2020. Um, taking a little bit soft, but still have a core position. It didn't act well yesterday, but today it's up 3.89 percent, up three dollars and eighty-three cents at 102.38. And together with Schwab, that's going to be really important. Schwab is up 6.5 at 88.58. This is a beautiful turnaround for sure when you look at the month the weekly chart it's halfway from the high of 96 is that double top we were speaking about double tops so this is really important i want to see this continue and if this look at the monthly chart the monthly says ha ah, Big deal. Charles Schwab has a little bit of a pullback, holds the 14-period moving average, and now it's way above. 
that is really important. So I'm trying to step, it's so hard to step back and say, what is working, what is not working? That's number one. Number two is the XLF finally got a, a really good surge to the upside, hit the 50 period moving averages up 98 cents at 38.36. I still think this is more, more problems uh, that we don't know about, but if it holds well, and if the, if the, the finance S&P Select Financial Spider Fund can actually doesn't have to even trade there, it just has to once hit 39.20. It's at 3835, just once, and that's going to help that weekly chart because that'll be the first time it's above the nine period moving average for a couple of weeks in the in the weekly chart. So with that said, there's a lot to discuss. And of course, tomorrow my show, the Tiger Traditions Hour, I'll be going through that. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And I'll, I, I'm hoping, I, I think Tom will be back tomorrow. I'm not sure. But have a wonderful evening, everybody. Stay tuned uh, for, we'll, we'll give you the news, the wrap up as we close. And we'll be back tomorrow. Tommy O'Brien Jr. starts off the market kickoff at 9 a.m. Fabulous show. It's fun to Building wealth trading in the stock